Hi, in this second video of the Listing Components and Pages subseries, we're going to look at how to create SXA search based listing. What we mean by SXA search based listing is something very similar to the page list in SXA. We're going to do this by creating a custom content resolver implementation that actually reads the same way that the page list ultimately reads in SXA and hence can read both search queries and normal queries or normal cycle queries. So to get started, the first thing we're going to do is actually look at what a page list is. So well, this is an SXA tenant and an SXA site, not a JSS one. And I've added a page list here. As you can see, it has the search page and landing pages, which are these pages here. And it has a title field, of course. If I look at component properties, we're going to see something called source type. Here it says that it's reading children. And I can use different things like items using the same template, uh, siblings, query, and so on and so forth. So you have these different capabilities that you can define. And you're able to define these source types by going to settings, item queries. So we here have query, which is the one I added custom. And you can have anything here and you can create your own ultimately let's call it a 6 a query and as soon as you open up here again you're going to see a 6 a query so this is really nice because it gives you flexibility to rather having to change the components layout service every time you're able to define that as a query that's completely outside of the actual component itself and the component can read whichever query you've defined here. So in order to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is actually go to my article listing, my previous article listing component that we've seen or event listing, I'm sorry, that we've created together. So you remember we had an event listing here that showed the child events with a specific position because I had defined the layout service to do so. I'm going to actually change that right now. So I'm going to go to renderings, project, training series, and I'm going to go to my event listing component. And I will go to its layout service. And I want to change this content resolver from event content resolver to custom. But because I haven't shown you what custom is, I'm actually going to create a new one just to show you how it's done. So we'll go back to the layout services and I'll create a new one here called event custom. And what this will do is it's going to have all the same content that other ones had here. It's not going to change. The only thing I'm going to change here is the type. I don't want to use the default type. I'm actually going to use my own custom type, which is uh, my own search rendering content resolver. And I'll go back here to my layout rendering event list component, and I'll make the layout service use that event custom. Now, because the custom implementation is already there and the DLL is there, I'm actually going to show you what this would do. It's going to throw an exception. Why? Because it cannot read property map of undefined, undefined type. Why is that? Because we still haven't done all the plumbing work but I can show it to you on another component like article listing here you can see all these different articles and all this is being read using my custom type as well. So because we wanted to mimic how Sitecore SXA does it we also created something here called source type so you can see here source type and I get to choose it in the same exact way that I was able to in SXA. So we need to do the same thing for our query, type, um, our event type as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is 
I'm going to need to have a rendering parameters for my event type. So I can either duplicate this one, which is my rendering parameters for article, or I can create a new template. So let's create a new template just to show you how it's done. Listing rendering parameters. Before I go there, I just need to get the actual inheritance. So it has to inherit from this particular location because I never remember them. I'll just copy it. And then I'll add a new template. I'll call it event listing, event listing rendering parameter. And its standard type is going to be Psycore template system layout rendering parameters. System templates. Layout rendering parameters. Standard rendering parameters. And I'll leave it in the training series. And add it. so now we have an event list rendering parameter. It should have something called source type again just so that I don't make any mistakes I'm gonna copy it from here so it's of type drop link so the type here should be a drop link and its source I actually took this source copied it from uh, the Psychor SXA one but what it does is let's just copy it on a notepad so I can show it to you properly it says query Psychor system settings foundation experience accelerator search item queries and then anything with template name query or the current site settings item queries query shared or shared sites settings item queries query so I have to have within my settings something called item queries and then within it a template name query so let's save this first and then go back to my training site and go to settings as you can see I have already item queries this is because I just copied the SXA one and added it here so if I just delete this one links I don't care right now and then I'll go to my SXA site and take this item queries and copy it to my training site of course you don't necessarily have to do that you can just create it yourself but I find this as a much easier way to do it and it also avoids mistakes okay so now I have my item queries but I have not really linked my rendering parameters with my component type. So the next step I need to do is go to my rendering. So my event listing rendering. And then I should find something called parameters template, which is my renderings parameter template. And I need to link it to be my event list rendering parameters so now any event list will use that rendering parameter okay. so when I go back here to my training and open up my event listing and go to my event listing component you can see now it has a source type which I'll choose as children right now. Save and open it in Experience Editor. And as you can see, it's now actually showing the children. But the great thing about this is that you're able to customize what it's showing. So it's now showing all the children. That's interesting. yeah it is actually working so what I'm gonna do now is actually first show you how this works so the first thing I'm gonna do is go back to my event listing component layout service 
and show you that it's reusing the event custom and then go to the event custom again and show you that this is using my search rendering content resolver next thing I'm gonna do is because of the flexibility that I was just saying about you can actually customize it directly from here so I'm gonna clear this save and build the query so I wanted to show any event so I'll say template is the event template so because I can't find it here the easiest way to do that is actually go to any event and take its template ID and then build a query saying template is equal to that so I can see now it's showing all my events I'll save and then I'll refresh this I'll ignore what's currently being shown just to show you my custom query and it's this one okay and now it's showing all the events that are currently on this site so you can see all events in all the different locations are all shown here because I didn't specify a specific location now if I change my query here so maybe say the location should be under event listing only so let's take this location and again go to my query change location is this it now should show only child events save refresh and it's showing child events oh, yeah, I haven't actually said it has to adhere to both so uh, what I'll do is add a plus to both so that means both of them have to actually occur at the same time <coughs> you can see it's showing anyway I think I have something wrong with my query but oh, I didn't save interesting let me just run it again okay okay and save we try to refresh again yeah so here it's only showing child events sorry about that I apparently I started forgetting how to do queries uh, and you can see this is a search based query it doesn't start with query double colon it starts with plus which means it's using the search engine or the search API's now this is all nice and great but how did it work so what did I write in my code to enable this well actually what I did was I used the code that's written in Sitecore to do that so uh, let me just reconnect here Sorry about that my connection apparently had a problem so I use the code that's written in page in the page list and in SXA together with the code that's written in the default content resolver and I created my own content resolver so again it's all just looking at the code that's written and customizing it ultimately so what I did here was in I created a new class that inherits from the i rendering contents resolver it has the content repository include service uh, server url media urls use context item item selector query all the getters for them and i created the virtual content repository which ultimately gets it from the service locator and of course i have the parameters that are not used out of the box and i'm not using them either then i went the first thing I did was check if rendering the parameters does not equal null and the source type is not empty then the item selector query should actually be that of the parameters written in source type the next thing I did was get the context item and check if context item equal equal null return null else if 
item selector query is null or white space, then just process item as you normally would in uh, JSS content resolver. Don't do anything custom. If the item selector query is not null or empty, this is where we start actually working with it. So what I do did here was I created a J object uh, of items that's an UJ array, and then I get these uh, get items from context item, which if we go into it, what this does is it checks that the item selector query is an ID and then gets that information. Again, all this code, I won't go into it because it's the actual Sitecore code. You can just do the same thing ultimately, but I'm just showing you how it can be done. And there you have it. So this is how to create a search-based item query-based uh, selector ultimately that enables you to customize it directly as a content editor rather than having an admin have to change the listing component. You can just change it from the source type here and you get the result you expect. Thanks for watching. Next video, we're going to go into GraphQL and how to do pages that have search, filters, and other capabilities within that context.